All right, 390 Wagon Master here. Here's the deal. This box was sent to me by an anonymous ham radio operator in uh, Canada, actually Victoria Island, Canada. Um, this showed up on my front porch yesterday morning. It is killing me to find out what's in this. Now, um, I do know there's a radio in here, okay? But I heard it was a ICOM radio. That's all I've been told. I don't really know anything further than that. This was sent to me um, for free. This is kind of a freebie deal. Honey's in the background barking. She wants in the house. Um, I didn't pay for any of this. I didn't pay for the postage. This came FedEx uh, across, uh, uh, across the border. So it weighs 25-ish pounds or so, maybe 30. Um, it's gone through customs, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I don't, you know, I just know there's a radio in here. I know there's an Icom radio in here. This is totally free from a hammy ham. Um, my buddy Mark uh, made a deal with a with a hammy ham up in uh, Canada, and uh, apparently he had some radio gear. And Mark just said, "Dude, just send it to my buddy in Utah." So there we go. This is this is this is um, an unboxing of unknown radio gear from a hammy ham. So let's call this video uh, unboxing radio gear from a hammy ham. Free radio gear from a hammy ham. So anyway, this is a one take deal. So um, it came to me with the bottom of the box kind of damaged. And let's just make sure, I think I was in shot. Well, does it really matter? Um, yes, I keep a mag light behind every door. Okay, it's a weird thing, but I've been doing it for a while. I'm not gonna, I'm still not gonna open up the manifesto thingy. Um, it's just, I don't want to know. I'm in suspenders. The suspenders are killing me. The suspenders are killing me. All right. So, yeah, Zach, don't let honey in, please. Don't let her in yet. Our little, my son's golden retriever puppy is now, what, three months old? She's just a bundle of love and a bundle of energy so i don't know if they do this at customs with the duct tape <laughs> that's kind of interesting isn't it okay so here is a i'll put this knife back the freaking death the death box cutter here the death knife here um thanks dallas i'm gonna shout out dallas all i can because dallas rife is He's probably like one of the most dedicated YouTube viewers I've ever seen on YouTube. I find him all over the place commenting on other C Beers videos. Okay, so this is um, the paperwork that it's been inspected. I'm not even going to look at it because I don't want to ruin the fun. So what we have here is a failure to communicate. We have boxes. We have cardboard in there. Jesus Murphy, half of this. It's in, ooh, I smell musty smell. Mmm. Ah, yeah, dude, it smells like Port Angeles. There's a lot of weight in here. Oh, dude, we got the Sakura coffee maker. Coffee maker. Okay, well, this is weird. This is really weird. I did not expect this at all. All right. So I have a box here in the side. I thought I saw something hanging out of it, a plastic thing. I guess not. Dude, pack's weird. More cardboard. Uh, a box to an LED TV. Fragile stuff. You know, they say fragile in America, but us almost Canadians, we say fragile. There, by go. There. That's weird, because all the packaging is in the top. And the radio stuff, I guess, is at the bottom. All right. All right, we got a box here. Okay, we got a craft box here. Let's uh, open her up and 
Okay, I see, I see shit. All right, well, let's do this. Let's take this in to the dining room because basically here's what we've got. We had all that packing and <laughs> that is weird. They pack weird in Canada, guys. So we got a box here. We had all that packing on the top. The actual radio gears here on, is on the bottom. So I'm gonna go take this and put it in the dining room real quick. Alrighty. And then we have a larger box with nothing in the bottom and all that packing. That is, I mean, I'm not looking a gift horse in the mouth, but, oh, holy shit, that's, that's heavy. Now, this box right here, right in here, this area is where that box is damaged on the outside. So, okay. Our little chihuahuas are having a heyday down there. They must be playing with the puppies, with the pooper puppies. Okay, now, let's do this. Let's, um, shit, I can't raise my tripod up anymore. Let's grab that knife. I could edit out the grills, but I'm not going to. Okay, so the front of the box that we looked at, the dented part was right here, and we can see that corner's messed up. So, here's the deal. Which box do we open first? Well, let's go with this one. Um, we have an instruction manual. Oh, cool. All right, let's see here. Let's uh, get the camera up here. I'll put it up here on this chair. We'll see what we can do here. And... Um, I should have planned this out a little bit better, but I didn't. So there we go. All right. You can just hold that there, will you, please? All right. Sacks can help me here. Okay. Don't move it. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, this was miscellaneous radio gear. So I've got an instruction manual to a Palomar Engineers noise bridge with a little laminated card of some kind. We'll figure all this stuff out after a while. Oh, this is like a reflected uh, uh, SWR power table to a meter of some kind or something. So a receiver noise bridge manual. All right, that's cool. Uh, the receiver noise bridge pamphlet. And a miscellaneous instruction manual. All right, here's what we got. Let's 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 let's, let's, let's grab this. I think that's what this is. Okay, this is. Uh, Operated by nine volts, and this is a Palomar Engineer uh, RX noise bridge. Okay, I've never messed with one of these. I understand that this would be for SWLing, from what I understand. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is something wrapped up here with a little thing. This is like some sort of an old car stereo thingy or something. This is uh, an Osterblock digital SRW meter uh, power dis display tour. Display tour. Dude, seriously, read that. Power display tour. Registered trademark. Digital SRW value fluctuates from 1.0 to 9.9 .9 with color indicators. One to one nine uh, bright LED well matched, blah, 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 blah. Four. 0 .0 and up bright LED something mismatch. Okay, that looks cool. This looks like some sort of like a 70s or 80s car stereo thing. So this is an RF power in watts and an SRW meter. I have never seen one of these. Sorry about the background noise, guys. I've never seen one of those. That is wild. Okay, we got a big box here with power cord and this is a power supply. Oh, dude, this is an ICOM internal, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I knew that, external speaker. It's an IC SP3, uh, IC speaker three. Uh, just looking at that driver in this box, I'll bet you this sounds okay with Masonite rear panel. That's Masonite, absolutely genuine Masonite, Japanese Masonite. Um, 
We're going to dynamat the inside of that, make that sound better. So there's an external speaker. Uh, let's see, we got another thing here. What the hell? This is an answering machine. A Radio Shack answering machine. Oh no, dude. It's an old school rotor box. Oh, I wonder if this is the rotor box that goes click, click, click. So this is an Archer three wire rotor box. Okay, all right, that's very random. Very random, I must say. All right, all right, now we got something down here. This is our last thing in the bottom. Oh, this is cool. This is, I've never seen one of these. This is a Daiwa um, antenna tuner. 200 watt, 1.8 to 30 megahertz antenna tuner. Dude, that's kind of cool. I have never seen one of those. Transmitter matching, antenna matching. Here's your band selector. Am I in frame? Yes, we are. Tuner on off. And it has SO239s there. That's interesting. This is model number Charlie November Whiskey 420. Oh, dude, they said 420. Well, it is from Canada, 420, eh? What time is it, eh? It's 420, eh? All right. So there's that. That's an empty box. Imported all the way from Canada. All right. Well, let's see what we got in box number two. This, uh... <laughs> This Oscar block thing is wild. Dude, look at how dirty those SO239s are. Where where, and when in the hell was this thing made? 12 to 24 volts DC. Uh, Tokyo, Japan. Number one. Oh, super nice, super nice. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Think. Oh, dude, I got a new computer. It's a Think Vision. Voila. Okay. Oh, dude, I got a 2022 Victoria Island calendar. If I had my RV park, I'd put this up on the wall. I lived right across the water from Victoria Island, Canada. The most beautiful place on earth. Beautiful. Beautiful. Shit, if I still lived in Port Angeles, I could have just walked over to the ferry dock and met this guy. You know? All right. We have a Vanco style. Oh, I thought this was a Vanco meter. This is a... Sashai antenna um, SRW and power meter. What is that? 10 and 100 watt scale? Yes, yes. With very easy to move meters. Very cool, very cool, very cool. Free moving, you could say. Okay, with that rotor box, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume there's a rotor in here. But no. Okay, this is a Lafayette code oscillator. Oh, whatever. <clears throat> Hemi Ham Radio. Now, this was sitting, I believe, face down. So that packing job was a little sketchy there, eh? Oh, Jesus, Murphy. All right, here's what we got. What is this thing? This is a... Let's zoom in. Zoomy zoom. Come on. It's my creaky tripod. Oh, dude, I wonder if that happened in shipment. I bet it did because the rest of this is cleaner than bug stone. All right. Uh, so what do we got here? We got an ICOM 751. Sweet. Nothing's broken. Everything's cool. This is cool. <laughs> Does that have a built-in power supply? I don't know much about these. Um... I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to put this bitch on the CB band as soon as I can. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's see here. Okay, so I have a floating wing nut. That's what she said. So where does that come from? Okay, there is a little ground lug right here. I think this has a built-in power supply. Is that freaking cool or what? Um, let's see. Three-prong plug. So let's do this. Let's drop her face down here. Yeah, it is. It's 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 powered. It's self-powered. So let's do this. Oh, this, the suspenders are killing me. Um, let's see here. It's plugged in. 
And oh, Jesus, Murphy. Let's just let's do that. How about that? There we go. A little, little support it up there, like that. Let's make sure the let's make sure the camera's up here. All right, here we go. All right, now let's see. Let's make sure it's not in transmit mode. Okay, so that's in receive. Um, right, so it can't put anything out. Let's just have an RF power. There's RF power all the way counterclockwise. Might gain counterclockwise. Um, I mean, honestly, there we go. There's the power switch. It was on. So it was actually turned on when it was unplugged or last used. So uh, it looks like we can't burn it up. I have no antenna. I know you guys are like, Wagon Master, don't do that. Don't do that. But I'm going to. Okay, power's up. Okay, here we go. We're going to go plug this son bitch in. Okay, you ready? You ready? No. Okay, I got no VFO. What was it doing? Oh, okay, hold on. There we go. All right, I was just freaking out. It was last used on, well, you know, 40 meters. So there it is. Uh, of course, that fine ham radio audio. Okay, so this is an ICOM 751. Let's put that over there. 751. I'm not familiar with this radio at all. It's a good looking radio. I literally know nothing about this. Um, kind of a bummer because like, the face and the glass is nice. That's the only spewgy stuff on it. It was obviously the way it was packed because this was face down, which really sucks. So it hit a bunch of stuff, but nothing feels goofy or anything like that. So yeah, dude, free radio gear, free, free. Oh, general coverage receiver. Oh, don't mess with me. Cause there's a mic jack. Is there a mic in here? Included microphonium? No, there's another washer and some parts. Okay, well that's cool. That's interesting. AM. Chicken wave, single sideband, lower. How do you go from lower to upper? I don't know, I'll find out. Reverse. I don't get it. Oh, it's band dependent, right? I guess depending on the band plan, right? Isn't 40 meters lower sideband? Right, 40 meters is the last lower sideband band, huh? Okay, and then 20 meters, it goes to upper side and everything's upper side past that. I, I forget this stuff. Um, that's really cool, man. Might gain RF power, let's see, tone. A little bit of cleanup there, but that's cool. Ooh, a very effective tone control, I like that. Kind of a choppy squelch for a ham radio. RF gain, cool. Ooh, I'm excited. <clears throat> I do have a couple microphoniums for this. I think one of them's actually wired, the little gooseneck mics. So that's gonna be cool. Well, not bad for free. So uh, I wanna thank um, my good buddy, Mark, stoner owner down in Atlanta for, um, making this happen. I want to thank the anonymous Hammy Ham operator in uh, the beautiful Vic on Vic beautiful Victoria Island, Canada. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like old school. Like, what is this, you guys? What do you think this is? A 751 would be what? I know nothing about these. Uh, from the looks... Like maybe mid to late eighties, maybe. Oh, listen to that. I'll clean that haze off of there. It's a little hazy, but um, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool unit. 
Um, you know, my mind is racing. It's not every day you get a free ham radio, right? Um, that actually turns on and works and is not busted up. But anyway, I want to thank Mark again. Thank you very much. God bless you. Oh, that's how you do it. Dude, that's old school technology. Look, you push the function button. These are dual function buttons, right? Look at that. <laughs> you push the function, you get one shot, you go to upper sideband. Couldn't make that a dual, oh, oh, it, oh, it's parked. Okay, it's parked on sideband because it's band specific. I get it. Is that cool or what? Dude, AM channel six. Okay, let's find, okay, before we stop this video, let's find out how the hell do I change bands on here? You guys are going wagon master, you dumbass. You push button number two. Where are we here? Um, how the hell? Oh, band, band, band. Oh, wow. Listen to that. 24, 28. Wait, 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 wait. Come on. Say what? 24, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 0 to 28. Are you kidding me? You greasy. Well, this was back in the day when they didn't believe in general coverage receiver because we got to keep this kind of stuff out of the hands of chicken banders. Those damn chicken banders. Well, guess what? I'm going to go searching for the mod because this just ain't Christian, dude. Look at this. That just ain't Christian. Come on now. Okay. Well, you know, I could see where this would be kind of maybe a dedicated, I could use this as a dedicated radio. Um, but what I'm, anyway, for some band, um, I have a, a, a Kenwood TS850 that I'm the original owner of, and I bought, you know, I bought it brand new back in the day, which I believe is a little more modern than this one. Um, but this is going to be fun. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do comparison videos. Uh, I want to compare this against the Kenwood TS850. And then you guys, and you guys are going to hate me for this, because I catch a lot of shit for slamming that 991 Yesu. I don't like modern ham radio gear. And I've heard from sources that actually the 991 has a better receiver than the 7300. Which is not, you know, people compare those two radios. They're really not the same. It's not fair to compare those because the 991 is VHF, UHF all mode as well. But that being said, I am going to, uh, we're going to do like a three-way shootout. We're going to put an old school Icom against an old school Kenwood against a brand new, brand spank me new two month old Yezu. And we're going to see what happens. Yep. That's what we're going to do. So that's cool. All right, we got some controls here on the top. Um, that's pretty cool. I believe, I'm gonna assume, this is all, yeah, this is all transistor. This isn't a hybrid or anything. That's cool though, you guys. Well, to everybody that was involved in this, thank you very much. God bless you. Um, <laughs> this thing, dude, this is like a, this is like one of those pyramid phase three boxes or something we had back in car audio or pyramid. This reminds me of a little pyramid add-on device to a car stereo or something from way back in the days. A power display tour. That's not a Rickyism. That's seriously what it says. I don't know why, but this thing just intrigues me. Well, not to look a gift horse at a mouth or bitch, but there's no rotor for that box, damn it. And, uh, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, Wagon Master will never use that. But that's pretty cool. Uh, the antenna tuner and the radio. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. Um, side firing speaker, probably slightly just as worthless as a top firing speaker, but that's the way they did it back then. But this speaker, I'm, I don't know anything about it, and you guys might, but I'll bet you that probably sounds pretty good for an add-on speaker. Well, there you go. 24 minutes, 25 minutes out of your life that you'll never get back. So thanks for following me here. I appreciate it. 
and stay tuned for more videos on this stuff. We're going to do our uh, re uh, receiver wars because I don't care. There are all three of these radios are going to transmit like a banshee. We all know that. Uh, and I care about receive. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, leave questions or comments down below. Please smash the thumbs up, the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. I should have probably begged for all of this at the beginning of the video. That's what the professionals say to do. All right, 10-4, KHW1276, the Wagon Master, Salt Lake City. Clear, gone, and stepping on.